Zach Hughes here with another episode of In Case You Missed It. This week we're going to be looking at the second Scottish independence referendum. Why is it come about? What's it doing? Where are we going? Are we all fucked? Maybe. <laughs> Let's jump straight into it by going back to 2011 and having a little look at how it all began. In 2011 there was a Scottish parliamentary election that saw unprecedented change. The Scottish National Party surged ahead, actually forming a majority government which had never happened before. Now for those of you who don't know, which admittedly was myself until roughly five hours ago when I started researching this, this is how Scottish Parliament works and how ultimately the Scottish Government runs. The Scottish Parliament is made up of 129 seats which are filled with members of Scottish Parliament or MSPs that get elected by citizens in Scotland. What they're responsible for is neatly summed up on the Scottish Parliament's website which reads, the Scottish Government is responsible for implementing laws and policy on matters that are devolved to Scotland. It is normally formed from the party or parties holding most seats in the Scottish Parliament Parliament, and it introduces most of the bills that are considered by Scottish Parliament. Now there's two key bits of information in that description. The first bit means that Scotland has a say over its own lawmaking as far as devolved power is concerned. So Westminster, obviously UK Parliament, devolves certain areas of lawmaking to Scotland so that they can have a say and they can have control over their own laws. Things such as education is, certain, is uh, something that they currently have control over. Now the second bit is traditionally the Scottish Parliament is made up of a multiplicity of parties. Not one party has traditionally had complete power. It's usually been several parties vying for power. However, in 2011, the SNP surged ahead, wiped out the rest of them and took near complete control of the Scottish Parliament. The party leader at the time, which was Alex Salmond, led the SNPs to a complete landslide victory. They won 69 of the available 129 seats. This meant that they breached the threshold of 65 to take them forward to be able to have complete control over the Scottish Parliament and be able to pass and introduce um, lawmaking decisions uncontested. They didn't need they didn't need to rely on any other any other party or any other seats to get permission to put ideas forward and get laws made. Most importantly, this paved the way for a pivotal and iconic moment in the history of Scottish politics, which leads us to the second point. Now, the first independence referendum came about purely because the SNP was so successful in the Parliament election. If they hadn't been, it would have meant that there was all sorts of hurdles for them to overcome. But because they were so successful, it left them with, with the key to unlock the door of an, a referendum, if you will. Now, in November of 2013, the SNP set out the Scottish Independence Referendum Bill, uh, which established the terms of a referendum posing the very direct and straightforward question, should Scotland be an independent country? After an agreement between the Scottish and UK government, the Scottish Parliament enacted the Scottish Independence Referendum Act of 2013, setting the stage for a referendum in 2014. On one side, you had the Yes Scotland, who presented their arguments in favour in favour of independence. Key members included the Scottish National Party, the Scottish Socialist Party, oh, and also Sean Connery and Brian Cox. On the other, far more crowded hand, you had the Better Together campaign, which by large included the Scottish Conservatives, the Scottish Labour Party and the Scot Scottish Liberal Democrats. Pretty much everyone that wasn't um, included in the previously mentioned bracket. Ultimately, Scotland voted to remain. The Better Together campaign managed to convince them that a vote outside of the UK was a step into the unknown. It was a vote for economic uncertainty and it was a vote that turned its back on the UK and sprung you know, Scotland into the dark without knowing the potential outcomes of that vote and where it would lead them. The once in a generation referendum was settled once and for all and seemed to be over until recently. Now another key moment in all of this came in 2015 in the general election. If we initially thought what happened in the 2011 Scottish parliamentary elections was impressive to say the least, what happened in the 2015 general election was mind-blowing. It was unexpected by large, but what the SNP achieved was a complete dethroning of the Labour Party that once held Scotland as a stronghold, as an uncontested battleground. Now the difference between the Scottish Parliament election and the general election is that in the general election rather than the seats in Scottish Parliament you're voting for the seats in Westminster in, in Westminster so the the seats in the Houses of Parliament now in Scotland these seats that there is an available 59 the SNP won 56 of them. The SNP had achieved complete 
dominance of politics in Scotland. With the most seats in the Scottish Parliament and now in Westminster, Scotland had officially turned yellow. The SNP had ridden a wave of anti-austerity, no-nonsense, honest talking politics that saw them in charge of Scotland at least as far as their devolved powers would allow. That leads us to the final domino that has fallen and led to the effect of the second independence referendum looking extremely likely. Now there's little I can say about Brexit that you haven't heard already, but in terms of Scotland's relationship with the UK and the conditions upon which they'd agreed to remain a member of the UK, everything got tipped on their head and the game was changed completely. Specifically, folks in Scotland voted by a majority to remain a member of the EU. The BBC reported at the time, Scotland has voted in favour of the UK staying in the EU by 62% to 38%, with all 32 council areas backing remain. But the UK as a whole has voted to leave, raising the prospect of Scotland being taken out of the EU against its will. Clearly this raised a new issue for Scotland and their relationship with the UK. A key part of Nicola Sturgeon's SNP manifesto in her 2015 general election triumph was that a referendum would only be on the cards if there was a significant material change. That change had come, which brings us back to present day. Recently, Theresa May attended a Scottish Conservative conference in Glasgow, and it's where she officially said, come at me bro to Nicola Sturgeon in terms of the second independence referendum. In talks of Brexit and what would happen moving forward, Theresa May argued in essence that she would like to see no further decentralisation of power in Westminster after Brexit, meaning that she wouldn't like to see any further devolution of power to Scotland. Now this obviously was going to be a red flag to the SNPs, but then she actually went on to further and directly attack the Scottish National Party. An SNP government interested only in stoking up endless constitutional grievance and furthering their obsession with independence at the expense of Scottish public services like the NHS and education. It seemed a staggeringly hypocritical attack. A party obsessed with independence, a party willing to gamble the economic safety of a country, a party that was willing to risk it all for independence, is really word for word a description of the Conservatives and their obsession with independence from the European Union. We're now in a position in the UK where we're setting sail for a hard Brexit. Even in the most optimistic terms, it does mean that there's economic uncertainty for us moving forward. As expected, several days later, Nicola Sturgeon announced that there would be an application uh, for a second Scottish independence referendum that they'd like to see take place in either autumn 2018 or spring 2019. Here was the Prime Minister's response. The tunnel vision that the SNP has shown today is deeply regrettable. It sets Scotland on a course for more uncertainty and division, creating huge uncertainty. And so instead of playing politics with the future of our country, the Scottish Government should focus on delivering good government and public services for the people of Scotland. Politics is not a game. I can't help but think that this tactic from the Conservatives is going to come back to bite them on the arse. So let's have a quick recap. The SNP blasted their way through 2011 Scottish parliamentary election. Admittedly, they lost the first independence referendum, but then hammered home hard in the general election. The major loss that they faced in the first independence referendum was on the very basis that it would be a step into the unknown, and crucially, it would mean economic uncertainty. As I previously mentioned, this is the very concerns that many experts, citizens, and politicians hold for Brexit and the course it sets us on. The very promise of a vote to remain in the UK being for Scotland a vote for economic certainty now seems to have been eliminated and thus, or at least as far as the SNP see it, necessitates the cause for a second independence referendum for Scotland. Now I'm not arguing that Scotland should remain or leave, I think there's arguments for both sides here. However, to me one thing is absolutely clear and it is that this argument from the Conservatives has to stop, that the SNPs are a party obsessed with independence and are at risk of gambling the future of Scotland's economy and uh, prosperity amongst other things because ultimately that is exactly what happened with the Conservatives and wanting to be independent from the EU and if they could have any rationality to understand and want Brexit then they have to be able to empathise with Scotland and understand at least their case for independence from the UK. What happens next remains to be seen but I think if the Conservatives are going to stand any chance of winning this uh, battle that's about to unfold they have to treat Scottish people with more respect than to insult them with this level of hypocrisy that defies logic, rationality or any scrap of common sense because ultimately 
the Conservative Party and a lot of British or English people, if you will, have been obsessed with Brexit. And that is the idea of independence from the Europe, uh, European Union. So therefore, for us to insult the Scottish people and say, how dare you want independence from us? You're, wi you're um, willing to risk everything. It's just it's hypocritical. And I think we need to condone ourselves better than that. Um, at least the, the Conservative government needs to if they're going to stand any chance of convincing Scotland to stay. Anyway, that brings us to the end of this episode, obviously quite controversial subjects. The, ultimately, I just wanted you to be a bit more informed and to hear my point of view in terms of what I think is going to happen with the independence referendum that is lurking around the corner. If you've enjoyed this video, and of course, if you've got something you'd like to say, like, share, comment, get involved in the comment section below. Um, but that is the end of this episode of In Case You Missed It. I've been me, you've been you, and that was In Case You Missed It with Zach Hughes. Take care. Bye now.